This beautiful MG midget is about to assume a starring role in a new film created by Tony Pitts called Classic and already MGOC Spares have carried out a lot of work to prepare it for its starring role. But as you see, the hood is in a very, very sorry condition and urgently needs replacement. So with a few uh, workshop tools, we've got ourselves together and started to prepare it for an, a new hood. These products are ideal for re renewing a hood which is not quite um, past its best. So with things like uh, Renovo screen cleaner, you can uh, uh, carry out repairs to get them back to visible and serviceable condition, get maybe another year or so's use out of the hood before going to the expense of a replacement. You can see with circular actions that you do start to get a, a much, much clearer uh, vision through it. However, I'm afraid this hood is past its best and we are doing this purely for demonstration purposes. Again, the same circular motion on the hood creates uh, a, a much cleaner and nicer finish to the car. And as it covers so much of the car's appearance as you look at it, cars and wheels really do need to be in first class condition to get the best possible look for your vehicle. This last product is a, a shine finish to um, just really um, give it a, a nice weatherproof and uh, clear finish at the end of it all. There we go, doesn't look too bad, but unfortunately it won't save the day. And with these few tools, we're going to uh, replace the hood. As you can see, there's nothing there that you wouldn't find in your normal toolbox at home. So let's undo the first hood and see what we've got um, by way of a replacement. This first one is a hood which actually has the header rail already connected to it. And it also has all the um, Tinex fasteners around the back. So you can see there's the head. Uh, header rail already fitted to it so this really will be the simplest of all jobs it literally is replacing the uh, header rail using the six screws on the frame to uh, the to the new the new header rail and then fastening it at the back where the uh, stainless steel rail is uh, clip it on and that's the job done. Now the advantage to that is I would estimate the time you take to do that somewhere in the region of about one hour. However, if you um, uh, take into consideration the additional cost, it's about another 280 pounds to actually have the header rail already on and fitted. And effectively what you're going to be doing is you're going to be replacing a header rail, which is probably already still in good condition on your car. So therefore, although it's a speedy uh, option, it is quite an expensive one. So there we are pointing out the three, um, the three fit fastenings on either side, which need to be connected to the header rail. Here we see a vinyl hood which has no header rail connected. It's a single coat vinyl hood. It's the least expensive of all the ones in the range and it makes an ideal replacement hood for an inexpensive uh, upgrade on the car. So unfolding the hood first, check that you have the correct hood. Make sure in all the critical areas around the quarter light windows and the back that everything is going to fit. And then you can remove the first layer of the paper, um, paper protection just to um, have a look at all the windows to make sure they're all welded in correctly and that you haven't got any problems with the hood before you start to fit it. Once you're happy with that, disconnect the hood and remove your old hood from the car. That's taking the poppers off the inside, undoing it as you would normally do when you're dropping the hood down on both sides. Unscrew the stainless steel back bar. There's usually stainless steel screws used for this purpose, taking those all off. 
lift the bar off, take the T-Nex fasteners off, everything's come free. And then fold the hood back down. Take out the rubber seal. There we go, easily removed. What we can see now are the rivets which hold the um, seal retainer strip in place. And these need to be drilled out using a 1 8 drill bit or slightly smaller, sometimes 5 64 is the best one to do. Pop them all out and then with a screwdriver, often you're fighting off glue here at this point. So just lift the aluminium seal retainer. Always use a new one of these, so don't worry too much if you have to bend it. It's a very inexpensive component and you'll do a much nicer job with a new one. So there it all comes off. Remove the, the screws holding the balance in place on either side. And this is where you're normally fighting off the glue that's usually used to fit the hoods on as they were in the factory. However, um, I would stress the method we're going to use today will not be using any glue on there. It gives you a lot more flexibility um, to change the fit round and get the best possible fit that you can. Here we go, taking the screw out the other side. This is your opportunity, by the way, to um, remove the head rail from the car and rub it down and give it a repaint. You'll see that um, what I'm doing there is shaking the head rail because inside there now are all the, head um, the heads from the rivets. So we remove the head rail from the car You'll see this car's already had a hood fitted before because somebody's done the same trick. They've um, popped a hole into the end of the header rail in order to get the, the uh, rivet heads out. So I've just made that slightly bigger using a ball peen hammer to make sure there's no sharp edges and then just shake out all the rivet heads. It will preserve your sanity because the last thing you want is to drive around the corner and every time you hear um, rivet heads go from one side to the other. So here we go, we're just checking that all the uh, fastenings of the hood frame to the body are secure. And we're refitting the head rail. I would stress that when you're looking at your hood frame before fitting the new hood, make sure that none of the joints in the, in the uh, frame have collapsed and are weak and sloppy because that can only mean that the frame itself won't hold its shape and inevitably you'll end up with a situation where your final hood fitting will either be too loose or you'll pull it too far forward to try and get it up to the right tension. The whole quality of the job relies on having a good quality frame so and usually this is the case but please do check that before attempting to fit a hood to it. That's it, head rail fitted back on now. And so we're ready to offer the new hood over and into position. Just drop it over the frame like that. These are T-Nex fasteners. Pop them through from the outside in the pre-cut holes. Fit the nuts onto the inside, as you can see there with the smooth rounding face uh, facing down towards the body. Here I'm using a brad awl to start things with, but ideally get yourself a pair of long nose pliers. They'll fit straight into those two holes and will enable you to tighten it up really easily. You don't have to go mad on tightening, just enough to make sure that the, um, the teeth on the outside bite onto it okay, and then pop them back onto the, um, the T-neck studs, three on either side. And with that, you'll see that already the rear end um, of the car, you can just pull it down to a straight line and put it into the right position to put that stainless steel bar back in again. This picture doesn't show it particularly well, but the, the, the 
the quarter inch of trim that goes right the way along the bottom of the um, of the hood should be fully exposed just underneath there that shot shows you it better so you can see exactly where you need to put the hood relative to the stainless steel bar and you can now screw back in all of the um, press studs which will hold your tonneau cover Here we are marking where the new hood will go um, relative to the bottom of the head rail. And now we get to the interesting part, the valance, which goes on the underside of the header rail, needs to be put into position carefully to, to dress that corner at the end of the header rail so that that's where the guttering point goes for the side valance. Once you get that in place, put your seal retainer into the place where it will be and go through the outermost hole through the vinyl and into the corresponding hole in the header rail. Just mark that through, feel it with the end of the brad all, and then once you've popped the hole through, hold it still and you can put through a screw that's going to hold that in place. Now that's really useful because you can see, you know, you can dress that out and see what it looks like. That little crease there will actually come out. Um, as, as the vinyl stretches itself across, but that's how you need it to look. If for any reason you've got that wrong, you can take that screw out and you can do it again until you're happy with the fit. Generally speaking, don't worry about it. That's not likely to happen, but if it does, you've got that safety grab. And that's the reason why we don't use glue. What we've done now is we've popped the uh, hood back between the seal channel and the uh, and the header rail and we've screwed it in. I should say that before we did that we, we um, repeated the same operation on the other side. We can now see that the head, is, head rail is actually all fitted up and we can close it up and have a look and see what we've got by way of a, a general fit right round. You can see that's looking really tidy along the front there. We've put all the other screws in the seal channel retainer. And we're cutting off the surplus vinyl. Obviously great caution needed here after having spent all this time to do a, a beautiful job fitting the uh, hood. We don't want to pop any holes into it. This is the seal and it goes into the channel retainer just with um, a, a normal slot screwdriver. It'll just push in and when you uh, close the hood up again it will crush it down so it will stay in and force its way in. We've just cut the ends off a little bit on the long side there which is great. Now we're marking the position of where we're going to put uh, the press studs back onto the windscreen again popping a hole through and we're about to use my patent tool for putting uh, the press studs in which is to push them in from the other side put the other thing on the top and then cut a piece of two by two timber to length to the right size so what will happen now is you've um, you've got a mourn tool that goes underneath with that piece of timber resting it down pop the punch on the top get the hammer hammer it down and you'll end up with a really nicely finished professional job without flattening out the underside of the press stud. So that's exactly how it needs to be.
press stud back in place again. And these are the positions of the other uh, studs which are already on the car. We're now taking out the rest of the um, brown paper protection. Taking a look at it. The same on the other side. And here we are just putting back in the screws under the balance which will really uh, weatherproof and seal and keep the car draft proof. So there we go. A very nice job. I can tell you that after a few days that hood will fit much better than you're seeing it now because as heat and cold uh, contract and stretch the hood it will assume the shape of the frame and will look a lot neater but already you've got perfect vision through those rear screens and uh, the improvement of the, on the car is immeasurable well worth doing for a few hours work good luck and if you need any help you know where we are